sometimes we lose members of the workforce because we're not having open conversations. We're not asking people what they want to do, what they want to be, if they want to advance. So what happens to these people is become disillusioned with what they're doing. They drop out, they find something else to do. There's also an issue about flexibility in the workforce and working and it's women and men. And, you know, I mean, I, I was a crane operator and you're working a job where you get up at five o'clock in the morning and you get home at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. Now, the next lot of people coming through don't necessarily want to work the same way as I've worked in the past, the same way as we've all worked in the past. So how do we entice them? We have to be more flexible in our approach. And it won't just suit the people who are currently working, who might have sudden commitments, things they need to balance out a little bit more it will benefit the next people coming through because they'll see how flexible we are as an industry, how much we're trying to change, what we're trying to do, and they'll want to join us as well. So there's, for me, it's just fixing the fundamentals and treating people as people, giving them opportunity, talking about their next move. I mean, when do we sit down, you know, with bricklayers, chippies and go, well, what do you want to do next? Does this still work for you? Is it, does it fit your lifestyle? Can we do anything to keep you, to make it easier for you? And then, you know, it touched on mental health and everything else. It just makes lives a lot better. But I think in order, when we talk about upskilling, we need to upskill the people we, other, we already have, give them opportunity, offer them opportunity, and we'll keep them and we'll attract more.